story we've already been discussing yeah. this morning, NHS to review or trans treatment yes. for children. Yes, I mean, and like you say, it's kind of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of this mm. report. This is a set of recommendations from Dr. Hilary Cass into how the NHS responds to children who present, present with symptoms of, of gender dysphoria. And um, I mean, it's was it 32 recommendations um, that the NHS have said that they will consider. And um, Wes Streeting, uh, Jack was telling me upstairs from Labour Party, said that they would, that the Labour Party would implement all of them, which just kind of, I think, shows sort of where the sort of temperature is on this conversation. And lots of it is, is very reasonable. Obviously, there should be more support for children in primary school, at primary school, who are presenting with, um, you know, who potentially want to socially transition. Um, uh, you know, that there should be more holistic care and re and resource into kind of people who are presenting with these symptoms but I think it, it, is, it feels quite disproportionate this idea that there's just sort of thousands and thousands of teenagers that are going to GPs and then being presented with puberty blockers which just isn't the case and I think what we slightly are ignoring in this report and actually in all the coverage is that for young people who are genuinely gender dysphoric the trauma of going through puberty into a body that doesn't feel like your own can actually result in the most awful consequences as we know there are sort of huge rates of self-harm suicide and poor mental health in that community and so whilst of course you know we need to ensure that we don't misdiagnose people and that, 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 that they know that there is not actually mental health or eating disorders or, mm. or abuse at home in these cases of of course, but there are still genuine cases, and I feel like this is sort of slightly I think, sort of I legislating think, uh, uh, around uh, uh, the fact that it's that there are genuine people. Who aren't have we? Problems. Aren't we searching for, with this report and with every conversation, Jack? Aren't we searching for balance? Balance yeah. in the medical profession who yeah. aren't put in a position where they've got to make decisions. Balance where parents, teachers. I absolutely get your point, mm. but I will also counter that I get very concerned that it's, and I know you're going, that it's a fad, that people are sheep-like and that it's the latest thing. And I think that one thing I learned, having interviewed many trans people in the past, is actually psychologically and the conversations and the help with counselling, that's far more important than have a beta blocker, have this, or whatever, you know, um, a, 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 puberty a, a puberty blocker and all of those things. And maybe we need to be giving more concern about the process, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and, you know, I actually spent most of the day yesterday going through this report. It's a massive report. It's about 350 pages. Yeah. It's actually quite measured for the most is part it? of it. Um, and one thing Dr Cass does say is that this debate has become quite toxic and polarised on both sides, mm -hmm. and there's need for sort of calm heads. But uh, yeah, two things really struck out. One is that um, she says that most people who are questioning their gender, young people, actually don't need a medical pathway. And then often you need a much more holistic approach where you you, you assess their mental health, yeah. you assess potential neurological uh, um, disorders, which you could potentially help them with. Um, but also just the overwhelming like lack of evidence when it comes to these medications which they are given. So things like puberty blockers, things like cross-sex hormone treatment. Yeah. Actually, we don't know enough about them and that, the actual impact they have at the moment. And so that's why it says the overwhelming finding in this report is just proceed with such caution mm. and seek clinical advice if you are going through this at a young age. Um, I wonder how you would uh, judge the success of puberty blockers, not just in, in blocking puberty, that's a given, but like what does a successful treatment or what, what does a successful pathway mean? Is mm. it somebody who feels happy with the way that they look? Is it someone who feels mm. uh, that they identify as one thing or the other? Is it someone who's got good mental health at the end of it? It's quite a tricky one to know It's an incredibly how it's tricky successful. subject, isn't it? Yeah. And, and, and I think, personally, I think, the report has to be looked at for what it is, which is looking into something that's massively important, which has become polarised, and people are too yeah. scared to have an opinion, and they're called transphobic, and also, and I think, I think it's something that needs to be talked about. I think mm. with balance, um, Jack, can we bring you on to the front page of the I yeah. public sector workers will not get extra funding from a Labour government? Bear that in mind, by the way. It's true, isn't it? Yeah, Where is, is the money coming from, Rach? Yeah, exactly. And a lot of Labour voters, uh, traditional voters who want to pour money into uh, you know, the public sector, are going to be disappointed by this. But, you know, Rachel Reeves and her uh, shadow Treasury team are pretty ironclad with the fact that they're not going to spend money, which they don't think they have. So James Murray, who I think has been on this show quite a few times, he's the shadow financial secretary uh, to the Treasury, uh, has said, yes, we are planning to raise £5 billion through closing this loophole on tax dodges. So what HMRC Every new should be taken on. Jack. Exactly. Every new exactly. And I think that actually, you know, it, the proof will be in the pudding about whether this actually works, if they're going to pump more money into HMRC, but can yeah, I, the can OBR I, will have to can, look at can that. Can I just say, which is, to me, is really an interesting point, is... is I know I'm the oldest in this room. The Labour Party was always known as the people that would say to every union, you can have your 30%, we'll print money. Her approach is more conservative, I have to say, than the Tory party, almost Rachel Reeves. And it will be very interesting when we assume they win. The response from that Labour grassroots to, 
You ain't getting 30% and you ain't getting that because we ain't got the money. I think this is a really interesting moment in British politics for a Labour, potential Labour government to say, we're not printing money, mate. We can't afford it with skin. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge rebrand, isn't it? Like, yes. mate, she has been... Yes. She constantly reiterates that we are not going to be the party of tax and spend and that we are going to be fiscally responsible and that most of um, any further investment will be generated through economic growth. I mean, it's a huge departure. But it's, from, it, always can, of... it always interests me from a political point of view that the time the Labour Party had been successful, when you think Blair and Brown, you think potentially Starmer and Reeves, they're so far removed to get elected with mm. a majority from what Labour is traditionally about, that that rebranding and explanation is part of the battle, isn't it? Yeah, massively. Uh, but to be fair, they have been pretty upfront. Yep. I think they have managed to break through to the fact that, sorry, guys, we're not just going to be the old Labour of old mm. who, you know, turns on the spending taps and, you know, Absolutely. basically burns mm. the nation's credit card um, straight away. And, you know, they've said, if we don't have the money to do it, we're not going to. I do think that this £5 billion is, is a slight chink in the armour. It seems that the Tories shot their fox with the non-dom uh, tax revenue raiser at the budget, and now they've managed to find £5 billion down the back of the sofa by saying... But that's not enough. going to close down that's on tax just dodgers. Early, that's early school clubs. What about everything else? And I'm not, I'm not criticising Rachel Reeves because if she can do a better job than Hunt, fair play. What I'm saying to you is there isn't the money there. Well, they reckon that 2.5 billion is what is needed for their primary school breakfast clubs and they NHS will tax the rich thing. more. That's what will happen. That's any any complaints about that, Jeremy? Yeah. No, I think that's a really, really unfair <laughs> way no. to behave. Right. Well, we need more money, not just for that, but for apparently mm. facial recognition systems. 55 million pounds that ministers. <laughs> Are oh, I've got it in my phone. Starting then. here, yeah. Starting right here. <laughs> this reads to me as being a bit concerning. Oh, 100%, yes. So, um, like you say, this new scheme to um, use more facial recognition technology on our high streets to crack down on Ship 15, which we've talked about a lot on this mm. show. It's, you know, we've seen these huge spikes in it, um, impacting small businesses, you know, organised crime, as well as people who truly are kind of faced with a cost of living, and we're talking about people shoplifting baby milk and things yeah. like that. So um, th th that certainly is a huge problem. But introducing this kind of technology, I don't think is quite the solution to it, is it? You know, the fact is um, there are huge issues with facial recognition and its inability to detect features on non-Caucasian body yeah. faces. So you, we're now going to get into the situation where potentially, if you don't have kind of European features, this technology is going to sort of slightly, you know, is not going to be able to identify um, accurately. And then we get all kinds of issues with over-policed communities being yeah. furtherly, further over-policed by this technology. And also, where is the incentive to stop shoplifting, which I thought which should be the problem? So instead of putting 55 million quid into this kind of slightly Orwellian surveillance, why don't we invest in more police officers or improve the response? I, I, I or cannot something like that? agree with Rebecca. Rebecca Hudson Gosh. It's because Gosh. she's got a position of power, isn't it, now? It's because she's an editor. <laughs> and if we don't do what she That's says... That's why she earns the big bucks. You know? <laughs> oh, you're upset. She's, she, by the way, they have renegotiated. She's earning twice what you are now. Yeah, no, I heard that as well. Oh, that's that. all right, though. Well, it's her Can you imagine contribution, if you were yeah. a man earning twice as much as her? There you go. Know. Crack on the Can you imagine? Shoplifting no, for me. I, I completely it's agree. It's just an election in a minute, isn't it? Why haven't they done this for the last mm. however many years? And this is what bosses have been crying out for for so long now. They yeah. basically say that shoplifting has been decriminalised. And in the vast yeah. majority yeah. of cases, they'll call the police and the police will go, ah, sorry, mate, there's nothing we can do about it. You know, they're losing about £1 billion a year, the industry, via shoplifting. And, you know, you can sort of tinkle around the edges and they've created a new offence for assault on retail workers. We know violence against shop staff is on the up. So I think that's probably a good thing. But unless you actually get the police to come and respond to every single yeah. case of you know, what theft, was it the police not were saying? If it. it was less than two hundred quid, they wouldn't come yeah. out. Yes. And I'm yeah. completely with Rebecca. Get more policemen and women yeah. on the streets. But that gives you intel, and right? Why, why do you even need specific legislation for assaulting a shoplifter? Mm. It should yeah. fall under existing laws. It it and prosecute like them quicker and do mm. something. It like... seems like they want the headlines and rather than focusing on the, the actual this is, substance. I mean, we were saying in the last in the, about a half an hour ago. Apparently, Labour are going to sort out the high streets. All oh, right, they're all closing. Tories are going to deal with a crackdown on a crime against, you know, shoplifting. Mm. There's six months to go. I go back to what I say now. I think the British people are more switched on. I don't know whether yeah. we weren't in the past, but I think people will go, it's April. There's an election six mm. months. Why didn't you do this four right. years ago? Do yeah. you believe that? Yeah. I really want to yeah. move on to the next story because yeah. Jack, front page of the Times, apparently dealing with an irritating person and writing down exactly why you find them annoying may seem risky, but as long as you throw <laughs> it away, do you find a study steam suggests coming out of your fed, that right? doing so can would I be just, good. Can I just ask you? Do you do do I irritate you? Nope. <laughs> Oliver said, is Nicola Thorpe your best friend because you sit next to her? That's so cute. And I went, no, I hate it. No, I'm <laughs> So, um, is this a good idea to write? I mean, the only danger, this is a bit like sending an email. 
people write them and then push the they button are, by mistake. Exactly, yes. they live mm. forever. Mm. I don't know. As long as you're throwing it away in a, well, burn it. Yeah, actually. yeah, but uh, there, there you are. Where do yeah. you put it? My, you're like you get. You, it will be found. Have it up here. But maybe better to to have to kind of have the cathartic act of writing it out. Do you write a diary? No, no. Do you I'm write a diary? Angry. No. Because that's Becky's what. Never <laughs> angry. Never angry. What, what you are? She's, She's never angry. angry. She doesn't need to write it down. You're chill. never angry. Just super chill. Does nothing make you angry? Give us two more hours, <laughs> Becca. I'll make you angry. Well, now she's the big Challenge. boss. Maybe people in her office... Yeah, now I worry. Yeah, that's, that's, why the why the, that's why the paper bill has gone up all of a sudden. You need to start checking yeah. the waste paper bill. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, imagine when they've all gone home and you're like, oh, I'm the editor of the news movement. You're running around and all in all this paper basket. She's a... I hate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you write Deep things down? Do you write things in newspapers, Jack, if you're angry at somebody? Have you ever written a... Yeah. Or you can write a letter, you know, if you're not happy with it, you can write to uh, letters, I think, at the sun.co.uk. Oh, we can write and, about uh, you. Right, exactly. Oh, you can say, like <laughs> Elson, who wrote that awful piece the other day. Have you you know, you, who's bitter and twisted. Yeah. He hasn't been promoted, <laughs> by the way, Vic. Um, have you ever written an article where you've subtly slagged somebody yes. off because Ooh. you're angry, although nobody would know it? That's a good think, question. I don't think so. As in someone in my own life, I've never yeah. done that, no. Some it's politicians who I your... write about, but that's pretty... It's not, you know... No, no, but say you dagger, interview a politician open. and they treat you really badly and you don't like yeah. it, do you do an article at an angle like... I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tell everybody I'm going to make them out to be a nightmare, but <laughs> I absolutely know I have. No, Jeremy, because I'm incredibly professional. Of course he is. Have you ever written anything anonymously? Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, well, he'd say that, wouldn't he? I don't think so. He would say that. Mm. Have you ever written anything anonymously? No, no. But I, I think you're too chilled. Like, and I'm too, no, I, you're but a I boss. Think, Have you got I, a bigger office as well now? No, no. I do get an assistant now. No. She's outside oh, making the coffee right oh, now. Actually, no, isn't it? No. Don't lie. You should have seen I mean, the way that she no, berated no, no, no. her. No, he's sat next to her. That's, his, that's her. You're going to be her executive assistant. Oh, Elson. I'll tell you what. If, if, if you don't pick out the blue M and M, she goes mental. <laughs>